Well, hey there, friends. This is Ari, just in case you didn't recognize me with my new Corona beard. And I wanted to take a moment to share with you my latest poem called Six Feet Apart Together, which, as you might imagine, has been inspired by the events surrounding the COVID-19 outbreak and the widespread call for social distancing, where people have been asked to stay approximately six or more feet away from each other in order to help prevent the spread of the virus. Now, I first got the idea for this when I went to a local grocery store and I saw a sign in the entrance that used grocery cart lengths as a measure to help customers approximate what six feet might be. And then I saw a number of reports about how different cities around the country and around the world were also using these kinds of clever analogies to help people visualize the length that six feet might be, but in a more regionally inspired way. In Florida, for example, they were asking folks to stay about a one alligator length away from each other. In California, I believe it was surfboards. In Kentucky, it was horses and barrels of bourbon. In Alaska, it was black bears and bald eagles. In Texas, it was armadillos and horned lizards. In Hawaii, it was turtles. I think you get the idea. And I thought, what a fun and creative way to help people visualize this concept of length. And wouldn't this be an imaginative way for kids to learn as well? So with that in mind, friends, here is Six Feet Apart Together, a tale of social distancing in the age of a pandemic. A dangerous little bug one day descended on our race, forcing us to distance, to keep a margin of space between ourselves and others, and in this way intervene in the spreading of the little bug we call COVID-19. The scientists determined with vigilance and guile that folks should keep a distance of six feet to a mile. Well, count us in, the children cried. We'd love to join that trial. But first, please tell us just how much is six feet to a mile? A very intelligent question, said the doctor in command. Let's see if I can translate in terms you'd understand. Let's start real small with just an inch. That's not so very long. Just think of something checker-sized or a tile when playing mahjong. Now take 12 inches back to back and put them in a row. What you've got now, friend, lying end to end, is a foot by status quo. And foot by foot we add them up, they amass and they accrete, till one by one and two by two, a foot becomes six feet. Looking just a bit confused, one child tugged at his sleeve. Forgive my pertinence, he said, or sounding too naive, but aren't feet just things discreet that dangle neath your hips? The things we use to jump and skip or take on walking trips? He paused then for an answer and nervously bit his lips. So true, mon frere, you're darn right there, came the doctor's kind reply. But in this case, the foot's a space or measure we apply whenever we're in dire need to gain the group consent of a standard to agree upon for distance measurement. The boy said he was grateful for the doctor's brief abruption, and the doc continued on with no further interruption. Now take one foot and double it, then multiply by three. By insistence, that's the distance you should stand apart from me. Recommended by the higher-ups who run the CDC, I repeat, about six feet is the closest you should be. Well, thanks for trying to clarify, but still I am confused, said a huddled child befuddled as he stared down at his shoes. Is there some way to explain to me in manners less encumbered by all those calculations or things that should be numbered? The doc looked down and paused a tick, not knowing what to say then smartly snapped his fingers as a thought came into play. Perhaps a picture better serve my purposes prophetic if I simply used analogies 
or spoke in terms poetic. With that, he looked down at the group of young and beaming faces and invented on that very spot some hypothetical cases. Do you like to bike? The doctor asked. I do, the child replied. Then imagine the space two bikes displace, front and back, not side to side. I like to dance, young Susie cried. In fact, I take ballet. In that case, Suze, the doc replied, it's a six foot tour jeté. We like animals, Moore spoke up as they crowded in to see. Can you give us a clue from something you'd view in a zoo or menagerie? Be happy to, the doc replied, considering the props. Six feet would be about the size your average kangaroo hops. Another effective distance predictor is simply the length of a boa constrictor. An elongated one, which goes without saying, not curled or coiled, but stretched where it's laying. The tip to toe length of your average black bear is another good metric for you to compare as might be the rhino, the elk, or the new, all beasts within range of your six-foot purview. If you're counting in penguins lined up in a row, six feet might equate to ten penguins or so. Unless they're the emperors, much bigger-sized birds, then I'd cut the line down to roughly two-thirds. The length of a leopard, the jump of a jumbuck, the width of a large pachyderm, are similar forms of animal norms that I now can officially confirm. An inquisitive child below him who was hovering round his knees said, thank you, Doc, for expanding the talk to creature analogies. But because I am impartial to nothing of those sorts, if you wouldn't mind, could you please define six feet in terms of sports? The kindly Doc addressed again the group of small cohorts. If games or sports from fields and courts are a better measure for you, then close your eyes and visualize the lengths six feet might accrue. It's the height of a net on a basketball court, the top of a goalpost in soccer, the width of the lane you'd bowl on for sport, or perhaps just a six foot high locker. It's the length of a horse on a triple crown course, usually twice tall as the jockey, the six-foot-long oar used rowing ashore, or the width of the goal line in hockey. I hope this gives a little insight into how much six feet really is. Don't worry, though, it's just for show. I promise there won't be a quiz. The doc's broad smile reflected back from the kids he was there to entreat. Okay, he said, let's forge ahead and imagine what else is six feet. Side by side, it's about as wide as 20 bags of Cheetos, or stood upright about the height of two Danny DeVitos. One-tenth a brontosaurus length, one-half a V-dub bug, as tall as Michael Jordan, or a 30-pound sea slug. One-fifth the length of a London bus, one-thirtieth the Tower of Pisa, as long as a lock of Rapunzel's hair, or a flag from the Isle of Ibiza. The main thing is, while it's serious biz to keep yourselves apart, whether six feet or nine, the bottom line is measuring's not exact art. So don't worry, don't stress, just take your best guess and compare it to things you'd envision to be the same size or about the same size. Don't get lost in the detailed precision. The doc stopped and asked if he should go on. Please do, sir, we have no objection. So he smiled, bowed his head, then solemnly said in a somewhat more serious inflection, I hope today this little talk you've heard at my insistence has emphasized how very wise it is to keep your distance. It's a message short and simple we each should take to heart, at least just for the next few months that we remain apart. You can write this down on paper on a chalkboard or papyrus. By keeping space between us, we can curb the spread of virus. Text it to your neighbors, to your family and your friends. 
Remind them each to do their part as propriety demands. The doctor then stood up as if he meant to take his leave, but the children gathered close around and one pulled on his sleeve. Isn't there more, the child implored, that we can do than this? The doc then reassured them that there most assuredly is. Wash your hands, both oft and plenty, as the CDC now beckons, with lots of soap to help you cope for at least two dozen seconds. Keep your spaces clean. It's both prudent and it's urgent. And luckily, it only takes some water and detergent. Limit your activities to those that are essential. This act of fay can help delay the viral spread potential. Wear a face mask when in public, though it seems a daunting chore. It's the least that you might feign to do to keep from spreading more. Beware contacting people who you think might have le grip. Cover coughs and sneezes, fend off post-nasal drip. The virulence that this virus shows is more than commonplace. So that being said, don't touch your head, your eyes, your mouth, your face. If you start to feel the tickle of a sore throat or a cough, if your temperature is rising or all factories have shut off, if your little lungs are gasping because you just can't get some air, I'd say go quick if you're this sick and get some urgent care. Let's keep our social distance, whether achieved by brash or stealth. It's a simple syllogism. Keep your distance, keep your health. Make a six foot reach your mantra, your anthem and your song, and hope the days not far away, a cure will come along. But till that time a vaccine comes to ameliorate our fate, let's also think of all the folks we so appreciate. The ones who work the front lines, saving lives while risking theirs. The ones employed in restaurants and stores, providing wares. The teachers teaching from their homes to all their protégés. The Uber and Lyft drivers delivering groceries. The attendants at the gas stations. The clerks who staff the banks. And of course, the civil servants who have earned our heartfelt thanks. The pilots with their skeleton crew, crisscrossing or the nation, are just among the many who deserve our approbation. I'd love to pat them on the back and shake each by the hand, and thank them for their service at our beck and our command. Perhaps one day we all will meet and sit us down for ale, and there we might, with keen hindsight, recall this COVID tale. A tale of how society once came to normalize the act of social distancing, which served to paralyze those fundamental instincts that lead two beings to hug, which sure will do, I and you, once we've beat this bug. Yes, once the virus passes and we end this contact drought, we'll clasp each other close again. Of this, I have no doubt. But till that day's upon us, I must ardently repeat, stay back the hell away and keep your distance at six feet. Mm -hmm.